The council approved a box office expansion plan earlier this year to deploy 33 new drop boxes across King County in order to improve voter access. I think 30 of them are in Councilmember Dembowski's district. <laughs> uh, Heidi Papachok is here from our staff to lead us through the staff report. Heidi, please begin. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Heidi Papachok, Council staff. As you alluded to, Mr. Chair, in May 2016, Council approved motion 14364. That authorized elections to open an additional 33 drop box locations across King County in time for the November, uh, two, 2016 November general election. The plan notes that elections will install the new drop boxes in two phases in 2016. In phase one, 19 new drop boxes will be installed for the August primary election. In phase two, 14 new drop boxes will be installed for the November general election. Table one and table two on page 147 of your packet lists the locations for the new drop boxes in the two phases. Uh, that concludes my staff report, Mr. Chair. And at this time, I will turn it over to the Director of Elections, Julie Wise, to provide the committee with an update on implementing the plan. Thank you very much. Director Wise. Chair, thank you. Julie Wise, Director of Elections for the record. Uh, thank you so much for having me again this morning. Nice to see you again. I'm going to launch right into what I think is a very colorful graph field PowerPoint presentation for you this morning. Thinking maybe it needs to be the slide version. Okay. So um, as Heidi spoke to is that we have 29 boxes that were open between July 14th and J August 2nd. And then uh, there will be another 10 existing, I'm sorry, those 10 existing permanent boxes and we added 19 new ones. As we discussed yesterday in front of the full council, nearly 36% of ballots were returned via Dropbox for this election. And that's more than any election history in its past. Uh, and uh, Councilmember Dembowski noted more than 100,000 ballots were returned to drop boxes just on election day. It's crazy, 101,000. And so then I just wanted to show you, kind of step back from boxes for a minute and show you an overall of where ballots are coming from. So right now we're seeing that there's 63% of mail ballots that um, or for this past election in the primary, 63% came in through mail, 36% again from our drop boxes. We're noticing that AVCs, our accessible voting centers, are being used less and less. And you'll see alternate format, and that's that other uh, pie chart that you see called out to the side there, is showing where our alternate format. Remember that people can access their ballot online and this is showing how they're returning those ballots that they access online. We offer this to our military and overseas voters, but we offer this to all of, all of the voters a week before election day. And as you can see, they're also using Dropbox at a high number. This chart is showing you um, that as we increase the number of drop boxes, we are increasingly seeing more people returning uh, their ballots to the drop boxes. So as you can see in the 2016 primary, again, 36% um, returned their ballot to drop boxes. And that's also the most amount of drop boxes that we have had to date. I think this slide will really show you, this graph really shows you that um, for me, this really makes the case for the 20-day, 20 24-hour service that boxes provided versus what our vans that were there for three days provided. As you can see, um, Councilmember Van Reichbauer, as we were at the Auburn Library, the Auburn City Hall van, and you can see that blue graph that's showing you how many people turned out in this election at that library compared to the van that they would have used instead. So we can see that there's obviously an interest for permanent drop boxes as we live and work different schedules, all of us, people can access at 24 hours a day. I'd also like to point out, oh, no, I'll wait to the next one. Returns by location. 
So Ballard is always a very popular location for us, but I would like to call out Councilmember um, Dembowski's Lake City Library location was the highest um, used drop boxes of the new boxes uh, that we had for this election. So how did we talk about drop boxes? Oh, I'm sorry. Right, that's okay, Mr. Chair, if I can. Absolutely. Uh, it was so, just over 6,500 folks returned ballots to the new Lake City drop box. Couple of thoughts on that. Um, one, it's remarkable in that the box was just installed just ahead of, uh, of the election. So mm -hmm. knowledge in the community of its location is just beginning mm -hmm. to grow. And, and even in just the couple of weeks that maybe folks knew about it, maybe less than that, 6,500 people used it. It's at the library and there's a city service center there and we had reports from the staff there that folks were coming in asking, hey, I, I see the box there, can I register to vote here? It also created a lot of buzz around and, and, and foot traffic in that area. So the, the box, the, it's not just really a receptacle to get your ballot into. It has a secondary effect, I think, Mr. Chair, at least early indications are of creating more interest in voting, uh, creating a sense of civic in, uh, interest and community pride. It's bringing people together. Because um, some folks have asked, well, why do you need these? Can't you just put it in the mail? But people really, these overall stats show uh, that the voters like them and it, I think for me, ultimately, it's that sense of security that you've returned your ballot to the person that's counting it by putting it in that official box. There's no question about whether or not it's going to get there to the postal uh, service. But that Lake City box really performed well. The other thing that, to me that it confirms is the validity of the research that was done by Director Wise's department to determine where to put these boxes. And they did a very thoughtful approach in terms of looking at demographics and looking at statistics and looking at areas that um, uh, where turnout was lower, a number of factors, and they they uh, decided where to put the boxes in part uh, based on that information. And I think the data proves that the model you used and the approach you used was very good. Now, as strong as Lake City was, it didn't come close to competing with Councilmember Cole Wells's box <laughs> in Ballard, the number one box in all the county. That's been there for a while, but over 15,000 people returned their ballots uh, there. Anyway. Thank you. Go ahead, Director Wise. Thank you. So to speak to sort of how we advertise the box, of course, um, I was privileged enough to do photo opportunities with many of the council members, but we also advertised on Pandora, and that's the uh, snapshot that you see there on the left of the screen. Um, maybe it says that 80s pop, so I won't claim whose favorite is 80s pop, but anyways, uh, Pandora, it would actually pop up on your screen when you're listening to Pandora, our advertisements, and we saw over 760,000 impressions. That's the first time we've ever used Pandora, so we'll be interested to see how that works for us moving forward. Again, looking at new and interesting ways to educate and to inform people about drop boxes, we did neighborhood targeted Facebook ads so that a Facebook ad that would be relevant to where you live would come up. And again, we saw over 290,000 people being reached in, in that service. Um, as you all know, Dropbox locations are listed in the ballot packet, in the voters pamphlet, and online. So where are we going for the November election? We've got 14 more additional boxes that we're rolling out this, for this November election. You'll see those 14 listed there. I'll call your attention to the four with, oh, I'm sorry, five with the asterisks, letting you know that we're still working on contract and lease agreements with those locations. So I would say that they're tentative, but we feel very positive. We're looking at about two different locations in Capitol Hill, um, either with uh, working with Sound Transit or at the Seattle Central Community College. Um, and we're working with Iwajimaya in this uh, Chinatown International District. And as you can see, Rainier and Renton in Seattle Green Lake, we're still working on actually signing those contracts, but we feel very confident that we are still on schedule and on path to have all 14 of those additional locations um, for our voters in this November election. Adjustments for the general election. We're always a group that debriefs after every single election, including with our citizen election oversight committee and with our staff and listening to what our voters had as feedback. So we know that we need to do um, more work around parking and traffic, and we will continue to be meeting with um, SDOT to develop parking and traffic plans. 
We also will increase our pickups, of course, because we know that more people are going to use the box for a presidential election. And we're going to add additional signage so that we can help our voters identify where the box is in the parking lot or in front of the library or the building. And we're gonna use what we call a lock and leave method. This method is that we are going to have staff out at the boxes probably three days for the presidential election, again, helping voters flow through the parking lots and to be able to drop their box or drop their ballot easily in the box. So we'll have staff there. Those staff are going to lock the box. Therefore, no one can actually add more ballots to it at the 8 p.m. deadline. At that point, we will have white marked vans come through along with security, most of those are police officers, to actually remove ballots from the ballot box. It's all about security. We know in a presidential election from past experience that we need to make sure we make that a very contained process. That concludes my presentation for you all today. If I may just take another moment, I know it's been a busy morning for you. I just wanted to give some shout outs and some thank yous. I wanted to thank Councilmember Dombowski for his leadership and support in really everything elections, but including limited English speaking communities, as well as the ballot drop boxes. And of course, all of the council, the executive, um, the Seattle Public Library Systems and the King County Library Systems have been fantastic for us to work with. But I'd also really like to note um, great leadership by uh, Tony Wright for facilities. It, it's him and his team that really made it possible for us to be able to have those boxes implemented um, and installed so quickly. So I want to thank Tony Wright and his team and of course all of our community partners that made this happen. Thank you again. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> After finishing uh, phase one drop boxes, what are some of the lessons you learned to prepare you for phase two? Thank you for the question. So that's really what we talked about with our citizen election oversight committee. We're really going to work on these parking and traffic plans. Um, as we noted, 101,000 people showed up to 29 boxes in just one day. So we really need to refine our traffic plans and make sure that we're prepared for over 200,000 people going to those boxes, those 43 boxes in one day. So we really need to work on our traffic plans. We need to do a better job around signage. And then of course, we're gonna increase our pickups. Um, Councilmember Cole Wells or, or St. Uh, Dembowski, do you want to add any questions? Councilmember Cole Wells, then we'll go to the uh, anointed you. one. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Julie, I think I brought this up to you before, but I'm wondering if, um, like Ballard being the, the top one, if, if you've done analysis of why that happens with the various drop off locations. I mean, I know that Ballard in the 36th legislative district overall has the highest voter registration and voter turnout in the state. It has been that way for a long time. And I'm wondering if it's that or if it's there are a lot of more families moving into Ballard or I, what? I think you just hit, hit it right on the, the head there, is that yes, it's just an area in which we have people that turn out more, yeah. that are, uh, it's an area population that has a higher turnout than we see in the rest of the county. What we're trying to do though with these additional boxes is that we pull some people that are going to Ballard to some of these new locations that we're going to have in this, this coming election and in the past election. But I think we should keep watching that. We might need to be adding another drop box in that community just so that we can ensure traffic flow and safety for people accessing that box. Because if you've been there at seven o'clock at night, it's incredibly busy. But it really is about um, that it's a neighborhood that has an extremely high turnout. So my follow-up thought on that, and I probably shouldn't say that, but I wonder if we really need a box there because people vote there. And would the resources be better used somewhere else? Um, and then another topic, another related issue is after the visibility in the media about the success of the drop-off boxes, I've gotten email from constituents, you know, suggesting like, how about doing it in Belltown? And I wonder if the elections office has received inquiries after the visibility in the media about additional boxes. Absolutely. We've heard from some different areas asking for maybe a box to be moved to a better location 
or that they want one in their neighborhood or they want one in their city. And so we've heard a few of those. It definitely hasn't been a ton of requests for that, but we've heard a few of those requests. And um, I think with the 43, that we're at a really good place. We're serving 91.5% of the residents of King County are going to have a box within three miles. And I'd be happy to talk with council members moving forward if we want to add additional boxes. Um, I, would, I would hate at this point to remove a box. As we saw Ballard has 15,000 people, what would happen to those 15,000 people? Um, you know, that would concern me that they would no longer have that service that they've gotten really accustomed to. And that may be the actuality of it. I just think they'd probably vote anyway, but uh, you know, I don't want to take that opportunity away. But I, it's interesting when you say within, what was it, five miles? Three miles. Three miles in Belltown. You know, it's a few blocks. Right. You know? Right. So. Okay. Thank you. I like the Belltown feedback. I really appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Councilmember Dembowski, any comments? I think I'm commenting out on this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just look. This is a success story. Yeah. This is a success story of the county council and the elections director leading on on this initiative in partnership, and uh, well, and uh, it was bipartisan to the extent that still matters <laughs> in terms of having a a, a broad a range of support by council members, uh, Councilmember Von Reichbauer, Councilmember Dunn, Councilmember Gossett and I were co-sponsors of the uh, uh, motion uh, on this. And uh, you never know if it's gonna work until you try it. And the numbers are just, they're surprisingly strong to me to go from 26 to 36% of the total return ballots come in the boxes just a couple of weeks after they were deployed. Um, says that our constituents like this and we haven't highlighted all the issues but I think mm -hmm. uh, with respect to operational issues that seems to have worked well we're saving money to some degree uh, by or re really redeploying resources from having to staff those vans right. uh, to now a permanent uh, drop box but you're able to use those resources for the pickup um, I had had some exchanges with uh, director wise about whether from an account a ballot counting perspective mm -hmm. Uh, does the change in delivery method and the timing of the ballots coming in, is she concerned about that? And you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you didn't seem to be. No. Um, I wondered if this might speed up our ability to collect, tabulate, and, and then deliver results to the public uh, because we've taken the mail out of it and that's still to be seen is yep. kind of my understanding of your answer, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, to the extent folks can get the ballots in before election day, uh, it, that, that will help. But uh, I just... You've done a great job. This is logistically challenging. Appreciate you giving some recognition to Colonel Wright, uh, but our partners in the, at the libraries and in the community. Uh, but to deliver this many boxes uh, in a short amount of time, uh, I think it really is a credit to you and your organization. So it's been a pleasure to work with you on it and keep up the great work. Thank Thanks, you. Mr. Chair. Thanks. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? Okay. Thank you all for being here.